incredible. I could smash your body, I could crush your bones, but I could never break your spirit. You are a marvel, little wizard. Any school that could produce one so noble as you is truly gifted. I will spare your mage academy. Hello there everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Here going on with our first edition Pathfinder Wizard Guide today, taking a look at your feat selection. Now, it should be noted that when it comes to wizards, given just the sheer level of customization that they have with them, depending on which school of magic you really want to go with, there's a lot, a lot of options that you can go for, but most of these are going to be useful for just about any wizard out there, though there are going to be a few exceptions, particularly with the build that we're going for here, building the Macho Mage Randy Spell Sage. And it's going to be quite a lot of fun to go into it and kind of break things down for you. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, then go on down there, hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on just such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. But now let's start running through all of this. And to kick it all off, we have first and foremost, improved initiative. This is going to be your human bonus feat, assuming that you're building this character as a human. If you're not, then just scoot everything down here by one level. And what this does for you is gives you a plus four initiative bonus. Especially when it comes to spellcasters, going first is going to be massively important. And if you've got any kind of a decent dexterity score, this is only going to help ensure that you are going to be going higher in the initiative order, if not first. With all things being equal, chances are you're probably going to land about middle of the pack and up through the top there, unless you roll exceptionally bad. Then, for your next feat, ideally level 1, possibly level 3, we are going to pick up Toughness. This is going to give you plus 3 hit points at first level, and then plus 1 per hit dice afterwards. So from second level on, you're getting 1 additional hit point. Now, this is not as important for other wizard builds. If you're going with more evocation or necromancy, uh, divination, this is going to be less important, but because we're going transmutation focused for this particular build, toughness is definitely going to be important. And really, toughness isn't going to be a terrible selection for any other uh, wizard build. It's just going to be more important here. Next, at level 3, we have Toppling Spell. Make a trip attack against a target that takes damage, fails its save, or is moved by your force spell, using your caster level on the attempt plus your intelligence modifier. This doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity and gives a plus 1 level increase on the spell, meaning a, level, a first level spell is going to count as a second level spell. And ideally, you're going to be using this with Magic Missile. This is going to give you, because this is going to give you um, a chance to make a trip attack per missile. And because it's always going to hit, you're going to be using your caster level on the attempt plus your intelligence modifier. You're actually going to stand pretty good odds of tripping a target even as you get up to the more mid-level range kind of thing. So this is going to be very handy, and it's going to be handy regardless of build. So it's definitely a very useful feat. At level 5, we are going to pick up Extend Spell. The affected spell lasts twice as long. Spells that use concentration, instant, or permanent uh, casting times aren't affected, and this also increases the spell level by 1. Extend spell is going to be great because a lot of buffing spells are going to be transmutation spells. So using extend spell with those and making them last twice as long is going to be huge, massively useful. So if you're using this with, say, haste as an example, having that last twice as long is going to be awesome. Definitely another great grab. 
Then for your level five bonus feat, we're going to grab Spell Focus. Add plus one to the save DC for a school of magic you choose. And like I said, for this build, we're doing Transmutation. Now, not a lot of Transmutation spells are going to have save DCs, especially since most of them are going to be buffs. So why do we want this? Well, if you use spells that transform yourself, those are still transmutation spells, and so if you change into a form that has, say, a breath attack that offers up a save, that this is going to increase the DC of that breath attack and any other effects that your, uh, your new form might have. So this is going to yield a lot of benefit to you in many, many different ways. Even though a plus one bonus might not seem like a whole lot, sometimes that's going to be enough to just sway a successful effect into a, uh, away from a, sex, a successful save. Ah, could I have said that any worse? Anyways, going on from there to level 7, we are going to grab Persistent Spell. Targets of a spell that make their save must roll again and take the new result. This increases the spell level by 2, so a level 2 spell will now count as a level 4 spell for the purposes of this meta magic feat. But, for those effects where you really want them to land, this is going to be great to have. This is essentially inflicting disadvantage on an opponent. Then, at level 9, we are going to pick up Power Attack. This gives a minus 1 to attack and then plus 2 to damage, or plus 3 if you're using a two-handed weapon, and increases every 4 attack bonus. So, by the time you hit plus 4 attack bonus, you're taking a minus 2 penalty to attack and are dealing 4 points of damage in return, or 6 points of extra damage if you're two-handing a weapon. Now, while this might really not work out for you just in your base wizard form when you use a spell to polymorph yourself like beast shape or giant form or a form of the dragon you're going to take on that physical forms attack bonus progression those physicalities but you're still going to be able to use this feat so this will help to increase your offensive damage output in those forms so this is going to be incredibly useful for you then at level 10, we take our first arcane discovery, and it's going to be our only one for this build. And we're going to pick up Multimorph. When you cast a Polymorph Subschool spell on yourself, expend one minute of its duration to assume another form allowed by the spell. So if you're in a situation where you really need to be able to adapt and switch to something else, this allows you to adapt. This is going to be useful because, yeah, sh sure, you're burning one minute of duration. But you're doing that instead of ending the spell early and then spending another spell slot to cast the spell and assume the other new form. So this is actually going to save you quite a bit of time and quite a bit of your daily resources. Absolutely worth the grab for this build. Then at level 11, we're going to grab Spell Specialization. Select one spell from your spell focus pick. That spell is cast at two caster levels higher uh, for level variable effects, and every level when you gain uh, uh, when you gain a level, you can choose a new spell. So this feat is actually really flexible in that instance, and it's going to be great for a lot of different buffing spells. In particular, haste, because throwing this onto haste, you're going to be able to have it last longer and affect more targets. Now, normally. You're not going to, you might not have that many targets to affect, but bear in mind you're a wizard and you have a whole suite of spells that are going to allow you to affect a lot on the battlefield. In particular, summon monster spells and being able to throw down haste on some of those summoned monsters if you bring any of them close to you or your front, the rest of the frontline fighters is going to be useful. So it's just something to keep in mind there. But also, you don't have to stick with haste. You can use this on any number of other spells that are going to be massively, massively effective for you. And boosting that caster level two levels higher for the purposes of this feat and the spell is still going to be absolutely worth it. Then level 13, we're going to grab Quicken Spell. Cast a spell prepared with this as a swift action. 
this does carry a hefty price tag of increasing the spell's effective level by four levels. So a level three spell will now count as a level seven spell. But getting to throw out a spell as a swift action is huge, absolutely huge. It really works into the action economy for you. It's definitely going to be worth it. Then at level 15, we pick up Spell Mastery. Requires 15 ranks in Spellcraft, so that's why we're picking it up here, and three metamagic feats, and allows you to apply one metamagic feat without affecting its level or casting time, as long as the spell wouldn't exceed a ninth level spell slot. So, this pairs pretty nicely with Quicken Spell, and means you don't have to burn up that, uh, say, 7th level spell slot if you were to apply Quicken Spell to a 3rd level spell. So, definitely Spell Mastery is absolutely worth grabbing by this point, since you can't grab it sooner. Then, for your level 15 bonus feat, we are going to grab Craft Wondrous Item. Crafting a wondrous item takes one day for every 1,000 gold pieces in its price, using raw materials worth half the item's price. Mending broken items is also possible and takes half the time and half the raw materials necessary to produce it. Also bear in mind that you need to have the uh, required spells as known spells to you. They have to be in your spell book. You have to be able to cast them. So. That's going to be a requirement there, but that's a relatively easy requirement for you to fulfill, especially considering you're a wizard and you can learn new spells. You can just actively learn them, and bear in mind that also as you level, you get to pick out two new spells at each level. So that's going to really do a lot to help expand the number of spells known that you have access to. And why you would pick this up instead of any other spell casters that uh, I've gone over before is because you are going to be in a position to where you can you are going to need access to some of these spells or not spells magic items magic items like uh, belts of physical perfection or any belts that increase your physical stats or mental stats because you're going to want these you are going to probably need to craft them because any belts that increase all three of your physical or mental stats, although the mental stats are quite so important for you, are going to be in high demand for you and the rest of your party. So being able to uh, craft them yourself is going to be useful. So consider that the belt of physical perfection, if you're going for the one that uh, gives a plus six modifier to strength, dexterity, and constitution, is going to cost 144,000 gold pieces to buy, assuming you can buy it. And uh, you're more likely to be able to fi uh, find it as part of loot or f uh, from some sort of treasure hoard, but that's going to be a bit of a stretch in and of itself there. But by level 15, you probably have 77,000 gold pieces. Uh, or at least you and your party can pool enough together to get 77,000 gold pieces. And while uh, while that item might end up going to the fighter, but if the fighter has a belt that increases strength and constitution by plus six, well, that's going to be pretty worth it for you. Although, I would still say try to fight to keep the belt for yourself because you're not going to be wearing heavy armor. Being able to have an increase to your dexterity score is going to make you harder to hit and boost your reflex saves as well and your initiative. So it'd definitely be worth it for you to keep it for yourself, but if your fighter friend wants one, see if they're willing to pony up a significant ch uh, chunk of change in order for you to be able to craft that item. Now, at, for your 17th and 19th level feat selections, I never seem to know what to put towards the end here. It's just a very difficult choice, but player choice, Vital Strike, Cleave, Rhyme Spell, other meta magic feats, all could be perfectly viable. Anything like Weapon Focus could be useful as well too. Uh, spell Penetration can be very useful as well, but you know, it's all just going to kind of depend a little bit and uh, is going to be up to you in what you want to pick out exactly. And just bear in mind that this guide is just that. It's a guide. I keep saying that just about every video or so, but it's worth pointing out here. 
This is just a guide to kind of help you see how things can be put together. It's not necessarily the most effective, most broken thing possible, because, well, for one, we don't have sacred geometry on here three or four times, but it's still something worth considering, worth looking at, and feel free to play with this and mix and match as much as you want, because certainly going as a transmutation wizard, focusing on polymorphing or transforming ourselves to more effective physical combat forms is absolutely a viable build for the wizard, and throwing in more feats that help to increase the output of the physical damage that you're able to do is absolutely a viable option. What I've done here has been something where we're doing a little bit of both, leaning, picking out a couple of feats that are going to boost your physical combat abilities and survivability, but are also really doing a lot to boost your spell casting options as well because Casting haste on yourself or enlarge person is going to do a lot to also boost your combat output uh, as well. And it's going to not only boost it for yourself, but for the rest of your party too. Uh, throwing it down any of these spells on the fighter, the barbarian, the paladin, any of those other combat oriented classes is going to be a massive boon and help to increase the damage output any more than a fireball could. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? Let me know either way down below and we'll engage in discussion. And remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.